You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today Trouty Perry and Jesse Logan, who were co-editors of uh, a terrific book. Um, and we're going to talk about the book in a minute. Uh, first of all, maybe uh, we'll uh, talk about talk to talk to each of you in turn. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, why don't we start with uh, with you, Jesse? Well, I uh, grew up in Southern Colorado, largely unsupervised on the uh, in the uh, woods and on the bluffs of the Arkansas River and outside, you know, and also uh, my family spent any time we could up in the mountains and on the streams in Southern Colorado. So I grew up with a, a sense of wildness and wilderness that really has sustained me throughout my life. And, uh, you know, I've done a lot of different things, but the one consistent thing in my life has been uh, the, the the sense of peace felt in wilderness and wildness. So uh, that's kind of where I come from. Now you you uh, have had a career in the wilderness. It looks like I'm noticing a hat in the background that uh, tells me a little story. Yeah, I worked uh, both in academia and in the and the Forest Service as a research scientist, and uh, spent as much time as I could in uh, you know in the field and. My major research interest for the Forest Service was whitebark pine. And Trouty, how about you? Well, thinking about what Jesse said, um, I was raised in Wyoming, maybe not all that far from the landscape uh, Jesse's familiar with. I was raised um, very close to my family's homestead ranch in southern Wyoming. Um, and it's still in the family, but it was never something that I was going to be able to uh, be a part of on a daily basis. And maybe that's partly what, um, yeah, propelled me to uh, an interest in land stewardship on public lands. And so I started working for the Forest Service in 1984. And um, most recently was the district ranger for the Beartooth Ranger District of the Custer and then the Custer Gallatin National Forest and retired five years ago. Okay. Now, you have a book uh, about the uh, Absaroka Beartooth Wilderness and uh, it's described as an atlas. Um, I'm curious about that. I'm curious about why it's an atlas. I'm curious about the organization of the book, the concept, where did it come from? I would um, start with that, but I'm going to let Jesse uh, weigh in because um, of his strong interest in the maps in particular. Um, but Jesse and I both had this idea um, about three years ago um, to create a narrative atlas of the AB wilderness. Um, and it is modeled uh, somewhat after the Rebecca Solnit atlases that she did of three major American cities. And I was interested in adapting that idea um, to the wilderness. And Jesse was um, patient enough <laughs> to go along with that idea. He had a strong interest in um, making some richly illustrated maps uh, to describe this area and to inspire people about this landscape and to inspire a sense of stewardship. That was, that was our idea, was to um, provide an exploration of both the cultural and natural riches of this really arresting and unique landscape, um, but through engaging essays paired with the, uh, with the richly illustrated maps. Jesse, do you want to add to that? Well, yeah. The, uh... The idea of a narrative atlas, I think, is really resonated with both of us. And as as Trouty was inspired by a book she was reading, I at the time I was uh, reading Drum Hadley's uh, Voice of the Borderland, 
And uh, that really resonated with me as well. I've never visited the borderlands of Arizona, New Mexico, and Mexico, but through drums, prose, poetry, I really felt I had a, a sense of what the borderlands, that culture, that society is like. So I was really interested in trying to bring that, uh, that storytelling narrative to, the, uh, to our effort. And uh, when Trouty and I first started, we, uh, we wanted to involve people we knew, uh, authorities, storytellers, uh, to tell as the voices of the Absaroka Barracuda. But we didn't have any resources and we were asking people to contribute a significant amount of time and effort to do something that they make their livelihood doing, the artists, the photographers, writers. And so we just didn't know what sort of uh, response we might get and, and our response was overwhelming. We went from wondering, is anybody going to want to contribute to our effort uh, to un two unknown, unproven sort of uh, editors to, wow, what are we going to do with this avalanche of great material? And how are we going to organize it? In one way, uh, we felt uh, an organizing paradigm was through the maps. And uh, the narrative uh, atlas, the narrative maps, it's, you know, the maps in our, our book one, which accompanies each of the 30 essays, is not something you would pick up and say, oh, I'm going to use this map to find the premier golden trout lake up on the bear tube. It's really to set the sense of the landscape and the place for the following, uh, you know, essay in the, in the atlas. So that's our, I, I think that's our sense of the narrative atlas. Uh, you know, there, there are our maps, and, but it's really a sense of place through stories and through authority. Well, I think we need to move on now to the audience. And I think we've already uh, uh, talked, talked a little bit about that. But uh, I mean, it seems to have, uh, or it should, I think should be recognized as having a rather general appeal. Yeah, I, you know, my, uh, my point about going from people who already know and care about the ABW to those who are West wide, kind of the High Plains Book Award country, you know, uh, that know and love wilderness, but are not familiar with this place. It will resonate. Trouty? Audience? <laughs> well, we... as Jesse said, I think it's, it's, and uh, it is very broad. Um, you know, it can be for those who know the wilderness well, and for those who may never visit it. Okay. Well, I, I thank you very much for uh, for your participation today. I, I'm just delighted to hear about the book. Um, we are um, so honored to have been nominated. Absolutely. Um, and considered for this prestigious award, Mark. So thank you for having us. Yeah, Mark, I, I just might add, I, I recently finished uh, reading uh, one of our quote competitors, Lakota America. Mm -hmm. what? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also just would point out that in, uh, in our sense of community and reaching out, our real interest is to market this book through local independent bookstores, uh, not through third party internet uh, sales, you know, and that's given the, the times, that's not the easiest thing to do, but we're, you know, we really want to support uh, our local communities and the local independent bookstores. Oh, well, in addition to that resource, it's available on the Absorca Beartooth Wilderness Foundation's website, which is abwilderness.org. And if you order through them, they get a 100% return for the book. Okay. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.